Hello everyone. I think you remember in the last session we did the psychometric chart and the properties of air. So in today's session, let me continue with the psychometric process because this is also important at the time of uh, load calculation. So we have a different psychometric process like a uh, heating, sensible heating process or uh, the cooling process or the dehumidification process or humidification process or evaporative cooling process or mix air process. So we have different types of process that will verify on the psychometric chart which is very basic and very very important uh, we'll use this at the time of uh, load calculation under the psychometric analysis because the psychometric analysis will deal uh, at the time of load calculation to find out the properties of air at different condition like supply air return air mix air fresh air etc so this under the knowledge of understanding this processes for different conditions is very basic and hard for an HVC design engineer especially for the load calculation point of view so we'll discuss in detail about the different process and at the end of this chapter 4 we'll deal with the equations for sensible latent and the total again that equations also will use at the time of heat gain through ventilation heat gain through infiltration at the time of load calculation for sensible and for latent so this topic is very basic and at the same time very very important and some more topics related to psychometry like bypass factor contact factor and psychometric analysis that we'll discuss in between the load calculation except that in that properties uh, remaining i'll complete all in chapter 4 only so i'm going to share the screen so here you see understanding psychometric allows the designer what what property of air must be changed to achieve the desired properties or as per the comfort requirement and you see understanding this required processes is a heart of hvc system design so what are the different process you'll find the list here and each and every process will verify with the help of the psychometric chart so you can find the different process first in the list is a heating process or uh, in other words i can say in other words uh, i can say sensible heating process next is a cooling process cooling process means it's not completely sensible partly latent how exactly i'll show you don't worry next dehumidification process and dehumidification process can be with the separate dehumidifier or with the cooling coil with the reheat option how exactly i'll show you next isothermal humidification process as a mechanical you know isothermal means means constant temperature right isothermal means refers to the constant temperature no? so humidification process at constant temperature similarly adiabatic humidity process or humidification process adiabatic refers to what you see isothermal is a constant temperature similarly adiabatic refers to constant enthalpy process means there is no change in the heat or internet so this is constant temperature and this is constant enthalpy adiabatic humidification process so both is humidification process but with the different ways next evaporative cooling process for sensible cooling especially for the desert areas next mixing uh, mixing air stream process means we'll try to understand the condition of the mix air Mix air means I'm referring to the fresh air with the return air. So in actual practice, we are introducing some amount of fresh air to the return air and you'll get the mix air in the return air plenum or in the return air plenum box, a, a box uh, which is connected at the suction side of the unit that we used to call return air plenum. That we'll discuss at the time of weight site at this level, just mixing process. So mixing process with respect to the return and the fresh air. So what will be the condition for the mix air in case if I use 50% fresh air or say 30% fresh air, etc. Next, sensible air to air recovery and enthalpy energy recovery. Last two points is related to this uh, ventilation reclaim or HRU, heat recovery unit. Okay, so that we'll discuss at the time of app. The last two points remaining i'm going to cover now in this uh, chapter four only okay so let me expand this process step by step the first process you see at this level you may not get the complete idea for this but 
understanding this process will help at the time of load calculation, especially at the time of psychrometric analysis. So I request to please focus on this topic because this is very, very basic for an HVC design engineer. So it's very easy, you can understand. So you see the first process is a heating process. So first of all, how we can provide the heat? There are different ways to provide the heat to the air. One can use uh, the electric heaters, normally like small room heaters, or else I can use the hot water from the boiler, or else I can use the heat pump, refrigerant coils, nothing but the same vapor compression cycle, work in a reverse uh, cycle. So different ways to provide the heating to the air that that we'll discuss later at the time of uh, classification of machine in detail at this level just remember we can provide the air by using the hot water or by using electric heaters nothing but the this portable room heaters or we can, one can use this heat pump refrigerant cycle okay so in, in practice what mm -hmm. system is in practice what system is uses you see first yeah. of all for central cooling plus heating you see central cooling plus partly heating we are using electric heaters okay, okay. but for central heating plus partly cooling in that case for central heating we are using boilers okay and this heat pump now in market with the vrf system so more about this system you will find in chapter 5 with more details with detailed classification at this level just uh, ignore this uh, how we can provide but how this process on psychometric chart this theoretical process at this level is important so that you can understand all this at the in the practical side when we deal with the systems so you can we can visualize how the process uh, of air what will be the conditions of air at different uh, process okay so that understanding is very very important so at this level just focus on this process particularly means heating process means just heating don't mix the cooling or other demidification or humidification part by part so the first option on screen is a heating process or in other words i can say sensible heating okay because we are not adding or we are not increasing this uh, humidity so how exactly so let me explain or let me expand this so on screen you can find this i'm considering say 0.1 and this i'm considering as 0.2 so you see this 0.1 the temperature of air just i'm considering say 32 degree fahrenheit for example you see this is exam you can take with any two examples Okay, so 32 degree Fahrenheit, nothing but the freezing point of water. No? But in mm -hmm. this case, don't get confused. I'm talking about the air. Okay, so water is different, air is different. So here, 32 degree Fahrenheit means say 0 degree. Just you can assume the temperature of air at 0 degree centigrade. Nothing but 32 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so it's air in air only. It will not freeze. So starting point, point 0.1 is 32 degree Fahrenheit. And I'm going to add the heat. And I'm looking for end result at what 75 degree Fahrenheit. This is my requirement. So you can see on the psychometric chart, going in the state path from left to right is what? You know this already we discussed in the previous session. Right. This, right. So you see this scale increase in horizontal and you'll find in the vertical orientation that lines but increase in horizontal that that increase to the tribal okay so you see increase in tribal but what about the other condition so let me write the condition first if you if you want you can please make a note of this you can write heating process in the notes just write down this point so all these notes you'll get don't worry but this point is not in the notes so that will help you so the first condition condition is d Drivable temperature. Hmm. So, drivable temperature, you see, I'm considering T1 as 32 degree Fahrenheit and T2 is 75 degree Fahrenheit. This is the first condition, means increasing in heat. There is no confusion in this. And it's a heating process. So, we are adding the heat so that the increase in temperature and adding the heat means what enthalpy so we'll talk about enthalpy also but first point is you see temperature second uh, so point one question one question sir yes how how are you showing that uh, increasing the heating will be horizontal like this uh, is there any any lines representing the addition of heating you see 
here increase in temperature means by adding the heat only no the on heat that heat. need to assume right no no we have this enthalpy also we'll discuss give me a minute so you see rh now this is no, sorry, 20, yes? 20 40 80 this this 100 mm -hmm. This blue lines are, I think, uh, this was the this point. is 32, mm -hmm. and going in state means this 32, and this point is going to be what this 80 is 70. So, this can, can consider as 75. No? Okay, so inc increasing temperature that is addition of heating. You see, the first point don't don't do the conclusion let me complete this points then you can you'll get the clear picture so at this level we are talking about the heating process so i'm talking about only heating and when you increase the temperature means by adding the heat so we'll verify what will affect to the other properties of air that is our mm -hmm. aim to discuss this so that you can understand change in one property will affect what will be affect to the other properties of air so in this case the process is what heating process and it's a sensible heating Sensible heating means we are not adding the moisture, just we are adding the heat and that to sensible heat. So first parameter you see, temperature, we are increasing from 32 degree Fahrenheit to 75 degree Fahrenheit. Because as per the example, you can take any two temperatures, this is just example. Now we'll, we'll inspect RH, RH at this point, nothing but the relative humidity. This is an interesting point, you see at RH1 means this point is 1, so all this 1 means related to this condition. In this point one so rh1 uh, you can find you see 40 this line is 60 and this is 80 so it's very close to 80 no mm -hmm. later after class with the scale you can measure you'll get 75.8 already i have this value so i'm writing this so you can verify with the scale you see this is 60 no? and this is 80 and this if i draw the point is very close to you see center line of this is 75 and this is above slightly above 75 so i'm considering 75.8 or using this two parameters you can find out with the psychometric software also no? the other parameters that you can you can verify later at this level just focus on the heating process so this values what i'm reading is uh, is uh, is extracted from that psychometry only using that software now what about rh you see okay. this point so you see this line is 20 so less 20. than tw less than 20 now Mm -hmm. So exactly if you check, you will get 15.6%. Ah, now you can notice the very, very important point. Increase in the temperature. But you see decrease in what? Relative humidity. RH. Now with the RH, we'll check humidity. So you'll get the clear idea between the humidity and the relative humidity. Still, if you have confusion between humidity and relative humidity, now you'll get the clear idea. So W stands for humidity ratio. No? So do W1. You see W1 and W2. In psychometric chart, this horizontal line represents what? Dew point temperature as well as humidity ratio. Right? So this 20, 40, these are all humidity ratio. Okay. So you can find one more scale with the dew point temperature. At this level, I'm not bothered about the dew point temperature. So you can find this humidity ratio. So in this case, can I consider W1 equal to W2? Which is what? which is at 20, 20 watt grains per pound of dry air. And with this point, I can say this heating process is sensible heating, not the latent, because the humidity is not changing. No? Mm -hmm. But what about this RH? If the humidity is same, how this RH will change? This point is important. You must understand. You must try to understand this. It's online. You see, humidity is same at 0.1 as well as 0.2. There is no addition of the moisture. Then, but the RH is decreasing now from 0.1 to 0.2. At 0.1 is 75.8. At 0.2 is 15.6, very less compared with the 0.1. So, how it is happening? You see, this is an interesting point to discuss. When temperature is increases, I mean the capacity of holding the mm -hmm. capacity of holding the moisture is, I think, increases very good this is the this is the only point yes you can please make a note of this point as the temperature increases as the temperature increases the holding capacity of moisture by the air will increase but you see the humidity ratio is same means per pound 20 grams only but rh is reducing it means at this temperature 15.6 rh it means the holding capacity increases that's the reason rh decreases because as the temperature increases, the holding capacity of 
air, the holding capacity of moisture by the air increases. So that's the reason this RH is decreasing. But practically per pound, the grains of moisture is same because we are not adding or removing the moisture. Na? So the total moisture or grains in the room is same. But the holding capacity increases. That's the reason the RH is changing. So I think you are getting the point, you are getting the difference between the humidity and humidity, this relative humidity. Clear but, line? Sir, can you explain that how, how it is possible that temperature is increasing and the holding capacity and that also increases? For example, you see here at point 1, RH is 75%. Mm -hmm. At what? At 20 grains per pound of dry air, 75.8, say round off to 75 percent. It means at this temperature, at 32 degree Fahrenheit, we can add, say, 20, 20 if I consider 75 percent, then uh, what will be the remaining? Maybe 25, I think. Hmm. Say, for example, 25. So, 20. when the when when the humidity ratio increased to 25 grains per pound, it means RH will be 100 percent, uh? Yes. It means at this temperature, the maximum holding capacity is 25 grains only. But now if you check this 75 degree Fahrenheit, this 20 grains per pound is what? 15%. Assume just, just for round of I'm considering say 10%. So 20 is a 10% means further I can add how much? 200 grains. So it means just roughly say 200 grains per pound if I maintain in this for a, for example at this temperature in that case we can consider rh is going to be 100 percent getting a point so the holding capacity increases with respect to so you know rh is what what will be the maximum possible at the saturation condition compared with the actual condition yes, with this yes, process yes. so now if you talk about the enthalpy the heat so you see h1 at this point and you see this red color numbers represent the enthalpy so H1, if you check with the psychometric software, 11.6 and H2, I'm getting, say, 22 BTU per pound. And delta H is what? 10.4 BTU. It means in order to, uh, so this is a key point. This is a capacity of the cooling coil. Sorry, my mistake. Uh, capacity of the heating coil so that one can increase the temperature from this 32 degree Fahrenheit to 75 degree Fahrenheit okay, per pound of the air. So we are not talking about the total flow rate here. Just we are considering for one pound. Okay. So this is the capacity of the heating coil at the initial stage. So if you add this 10.4 BTU to the air at the temperature of 32 degree Fahrenheit, it can increase to 75 degree Fahrenheit without increasing the moisture. Okay. Without increasing the moisture. Moisture means the humidity because the yeah. humidity ratio is same. Na? Mm -hmm. RH, will in, RH will decrease because the holding capacity decrease means the, you know, this already we discussed. This is per pound of, this is per pound of air, right? Yes. This is per pound. You see, 10.4 BTU per pound. Okay. So this is the heating process. So it means if you add the heat, that is a sensible heat, the temperature will increase and the humidity ratio is going to be constant. RH will reduce mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, RH will reduce and the humidity ratio is going to be constant. Okay, so this is only heating process. We are not yes, adding sir. or removing the moisture. This is one process. Okay, so okay. just uh, in my mind, one question is that mm -hmm. once we uh, increase the temperature, I mean, relative humidity is decreases. That is 15.6 percent is at the same time as per the design aspect we need 50 percent of relative humidity mm -hmm. so again i think we need to you know uh humidification is again required right no no that's the reason i said no what we discuss is only heating process okay we have all this process then we can do the conclusion okay. you see and uh, one more reason why we are discussing this because you see different application different requirement so in some application, we require only heating. We don't require this humidification for a, pro for a particular process control that equipment or the machine mm -hmm. not required to maintain the humidity, but a particular temperature mm -hmm. that that machine, suppose in Western country, and mm -hmm. in that the temperature is very low and it will not perform efficiently. So we need to maintain or in increasing the temperature only. 
by adding heating. So this process can be used. My question is that if it increases the temperature like 75 degree Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. so relative humidity is 15.6%, right? So, but we discussed previous uh, classes that for relate for comfort design, only relative humidity 50 uh, 50 no, no, no. You see, just now what i said is a process control so different process for different application so you just don't think for home and comfort we are dealing with all this process at this level don't do the conclusion okay, just fine. try to understand the process so that this will be used at the time of load calculation as per the application requirement okay for a particular application suppose for a particular application means i'm talking about a process control a room in uh, means machine a machine for example a cnc machine Okay, in the Western country, that is operated automatically, self-operated machine. So I need to maintain a particular temperature and the area temperature is say less than this 75 degree Fahrenheit. Suppose the machine is in centigrade, for example, the machine required 20 degrees centigrade, but the atmospheric temperature or the area temperature say 10 degrees or less than that. So in that case, we require only heating because the machine not required that humidity. For that for that particular machine because some machine required that humidity also because that releases the heat so that that also one case but a particular machine not required the humidity so only heating is required so we can use this process so just try to understand the process of heating that's it when you add the heat what will affect to the other parameters so, so this will help you at the time of discussing the mix air and the mix air concept is important refresh air and retain air so step by step, all this process will discuss so that at the time of load calculation, based on the application, one can decide which process is required. According okay. to that, we can plot the parameter on psychometry first theoretically, then the same mm -hmm. can use in a practical way. You see, the practical side of this 10.4 BTU per pound is a capacity for one pound. Mm -hmm. And if you know the total flow rate of air, we can find out the total heat. That That will help you to find out the capacity of the Heating coil. Okay. But at this level, this theoretical, we have some more points to discuss to get the because flow rate is not added now. So we have an equation at the end. After all this process, we have sensible equation, we have latent equation, and we have a total equation. Next, second process is a cooling process. But you see, if I say cooling, I'm not talking about evaporative cooling. I'm talking about the cooling with the say cooling coil. Means by using the DX system, you see, cooling is usually accomplished with the chill water or refrigerant. So in this case, I'm not talking about evaporative cooling. For evaporative cooling, we have a separate process. Okay, evaporative cooling means that we'll talk about only sensible. But here, if I talk about the cooling with the chill water or refrigerant means, in that case, you'll find sensible plus latent because the moisture also condense on the cooling coil na, as we discussed at the time of vapor compression cycle. So it's not uh, sensible cooling. It's a sensible plus partly latent cooling. So how exactly we'll discuss. This is interesting and important. So, you know, because of this uh, condensation drain pan or drain water from the units, hmm. how exactly from the unit that we'll discuss in chapter five. Now, so just focus on the heating, uh, the cooling process. So next in cooling process, you see example I'm considering, you see 80 degree dry bulb and 67 degree finite wear bulb. Most commonly we are considering this example as a standard. These are standard conditions, just assume that. And this dry bulb and wet bulb, I'm interested to reduce to 55 and 55.4 dry bulb wet bulb. This is my requirement. Okay, from this to this, this is my requirement. So you see higher temperature, lower temperature, no? so cooling is required. One point you can understand, uh, just example. Now, just we'll inspect point one and this is point two. Okay, so what are the conditions at point one? But before this, you know, how to achieve the cooling with the cooling coil either with the dx system or with the chill water system the more about this uh, coil uh, we'll discuss in detail in chapter 5 don't worry but uh, you, you we already discussed vapor compression cycle so you can relate in vapor compression cycle refrigeration is flowing in chill water system water. Uh, chill water is flowing that is the difference rest of the thing is same you will in both the cases you'll find the cooling coil and you'll find the sensible latent condensation etc so the first point let me verify this uh, RH. Achha, before this, you see, with this 80 as dry bulb and 67 as wet bulb, you know you can find out the point on the psychometric chart, na? We what we discussed in the previous session, right? So how, how I'm getting this point 0.1 and point 0.2, I think everyone aware of this. Any confusion is getting this point 0.1 and point 0.2? Okay, mm -hmm. let me quickly show you. You see, point 0.1 condition is what? This condition, 80 degree dry bulb and 67 degree wet bulb. So you can see 80 degree of dry bulb, this line is going up. 
and you see this incline line is a wet bulb now so you see 60 and 70 so in between i can consider say this is 60 uh, this is 65 so we require 67 so this is the point so with this point if i move in this same inclination and 80 degree Fahrenheit dry bulb so this is a point right no confusion eh? getting the point mm. using the psychometric chart everyone aware of this and the same is applicable for all the process how we are getting the point means by using the two properties of weight you know now the second point condition you see 55 and 54.5 55 is what dry bulb you see 50 and 60 in between i can consider 55 so if i go up state and you see this is 50 and this is 60 so in between i can consider round off to say 55 na? so this is a point dry bulb and wet bulb so point number two now we'll we'll try to find out the different conditions so first of all can you relate it's a cooling process you see point one to point two yes uh -huh. temperature is decreasing right, decreasing temperature na, from 80 degree fahrenheit to what 55 yeah. but apart from this this is not a straight line if a straight line means we can consider only sensible but it is going up to this point straight after this going down it means if you check this humidity ratio change in humidity ratio means change in the moisture decreasing the moisture you see at this point the moisture level is more this this point the moisture level will be, will be less now because you see this is 60 and this is 80 so decreasing the moisture means the condensation condensation process means latent also involved or else further you see if i just draw the line this i can consider latent and this is sensible this is latent cooling this is sensible cooling latent i am considering vertically down because you see decrease in the moisture now this w value and sensible i am taking this point suppose one to a then two so one to a is latent a to two is sensible oh can i explain this point again you see one to a is latent why latent because decrease in the moisture means condensation process and a to two is what sensible because it's going straight now mm -hmm. hmm. but in the process going straight up to this point then it is dropping just to simplify i did like this okay so this drop is a latent and state is a sensible so it means sensible as well as latent both the process is happening in this so now let me check this point one rh relative humidity rh1 one means all this point related to this one so you see rh1 can we consider say 50 you see this is 40 this is 60 so in between this is 50 now so rh1 round off to exactly 51.1 you can check in the psychometric software then rh2 uh, you see this is very close to this saturated line this line is a saturated line uh, where rh is 100 percent right this is a saturated line right 80 you see 60 80 then this is this line is 100 the the saturated saturation curve but you will not get exactly 100 you will get say 97 percent so remember why we are not getting this 100 percent saturated air the reason is for example if i draw this cooling coil and there is flowing from this to the left direction to right so what will happen air will pass through this coil no? In actual practice, you'll find the coil with a bunch of fins. If you don't know fins, don't worry. I'll show you the image at the time of uh, chapter 5. So what, what do you think? Suppose if I supply one, say, 100 CFM, cubic, flow, cubic feet per minute, the flow rate of air. So what do you think? This 100 CFM completely touches to the coil? No. No, sir. No. So the air which touches to the coil is called contact air and the air which not touched to the coil or a fence is called bypass right. air okay so in practical actual practice you cannot expect 100 percent saturation that's the reason 90 percent even though this point is on this line so 97 means 97 because of the contact air remaining three percent is because of bypass and that we can call as a bypass factor so in this case 97 percent is a contact factor and or i can say 0 0.97 is a contact factor and 0 0.03 is a bypass factor so what is contact and bypass factor we have a separate topic in detail we'll discuss with the equation at this level why i'm not getting 100 just that's the reason i explained this so 97 percent rh this is a rh condition it means you see with the cooling process rh increases so this is not the desirable condition no? and at this level just remember i'm talking about only cooling there is no 
I'm not talking about the dehumidification. So because of cooling, because of this latent heat, the moisture decreases and moisture decreases as the humidity decreases. What will happen to the relative humidity? Relative humidity increases. You see, in this case, okay, let me write all this point, then we'll, we'll get the clear picture. Now, the second point is a dew point temperature. Suppose DPT1, sorry, my mistake, DPT1, dew point temperature. You know, dew point temperature will find on the same scale no? as, as of this RH. So, DPT1, 60.4, and this is degree Fahrenheit, and dew point temperature 2, is 54.2 degree Fahrenheit. So what happened to this dew point temperature? Decreases. Decreases. Okay. And this is a dew point temperature of what? Air. We're talking about this condition of air now. And the delta P we can consider as 6.2, the difference of this. Next, humidity ratio, WW. W1, I'm considering 78.2. You see, this point, if I go state less than 80 now, this 80 grains per pound of dry air, this is a point. And this, when you draw, you'll get less than 80. So exactly when you check the psychometric software or psychometric chart, you'll get 78.2 watt grains per pound. And W2 is what you see this, this line. So above 60, below 80. So when you check, I got 62.4 grains per pound of dry air. Now, so you see, this humidity ratio decreases now because of extraction of moisture, because of condensation, right, on the coil. Next, what about the enthalpy? H1, you see H1 at this point. This is H1 and this is H2. So H1, you see, above 30, exactly is 32 BTU per pound. H2 is what? 21.6 BTU per pound and delta H is 10.4 BTU per pound. Now the conclusion is if you extract 10.4 BTU per pound the temperature can decrease from 80 to 55 dry bulb and the wet bulb so we'll, take, we'll verify this wet bulb also you see wet bulb, this blue color line is wet bulb, you see 60, 70, so 65 or 67, this one, this is a point and this point wet bulb is what, 50, 60 means I can consider 55, 50, oh, 54 uh, so with this matching, you see this condition we, we require to achieve, na? so with this condition means if you want to maintain, if you want to this dry bulb uh, and wet bulb if you want to change to this 55 and 54.5 this much of heat you need to extract okay and this is what this is not just sensible this is sensible plus latent this this enthalpy is what is the summation of the dry air and the moisture no? in the previous case that was only sensible because that is heating in a straight line but in this case state and it is going down so it's a sensible plus latent Latent, no doubt, very less compared to sensible, but it's uh, both. So 10.4 BTU per pound, if you extract, one can achieve this condition. So this is a cooling process. So what happened in the cooling process? In the cooling process, remember, the cooling process, RH increases and the humidity ratio decreases. And what else? We need to extract the heat. In the previous heating, we add the heat. Here we are extracting the heat. Okay. So both in uh, BTU sir. per hour, but one is adding, one is extracting. Yes. Sir, at point two, mm -hmm. we have a humidity ratio 62.4. I mean, there is a condensation in the evaporative coil. Mm -hmm. so the humidity ratio is decreases. At the mm -hmm. same time, I can see that the relative humidity is also increased. Still, you have, you know, decreases the, you know, specific humidity ratio. But that that is an important point. What yeah. we discussed in the previous. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a reverse case. I mean, temperature um, decreases. No, no, no. You see, that depends on the temperature. This RH level. You see here, you are asking means this W two decreases, but the RH increases, right? Yes, yes. 
बट यू सी बेस ऑन वॉट बेस ऑन द ड्राई बल्ब सो यू सी इफ यू टॉक अबाउट दिस आर एच मीन्स पॉइंट वन द टेम्परेचर इज मोर एंड एट पॉइंट टू द टेम्परेचर इज लेस लेस टेम्परेचर मीन्स लेस होल्डिंग कैपेसिटी ओके Yes, means it can extract more more uh, more moisture, na. So the capacity increases. So I think you're getting a point. Yes, yes, I'm getting it. Mm. This is a very important point to dis uh, to understand. So with this, you'll get the clear idea between the humidity ratio and relative humidity. Adding or removing the moisture, it not mean that the RH also uh, means increase or decrease in the same way. Ha, if you maintain the same temperature, yes. Mm-hmm. But at different temperature, the the RH level will be different. Okay, it's not mean that adding the moisture must increase RH level. No, that depends on the temperature. So that depends on temperature. As the temperature increases, then the holding capacity of moisture by the air increases. Okay. Also, we can I think sir relate about the dew point temperature because temperature is decreases, mm-hmm. dew point temperature also decreases. You know, at point two we have mm-hmm. dew point two fifty four point two. So temperature yes. decreases. I mean, the relative humidity increases. Yes. So you see, for that reason only, we are we are talking about this process. So you need to understand the relation between these parameters. Mm-hmm. So that time of designing, you can take the decision as per the application requirement. What exactly uh, the requirement? According to that, we can control that particular parameter to get the required result. Next, next we have this dehumidification process. And dehumidification process, we cannot think without cooling. Extracting the then only we can expect the dew point temperature, na? And at dew point temperature only the the dehumidification process start. And what is dehumidification? You know, extracting the moisture. Dehumidification means adding the moisture. So next process is also interesting. You see, dehumidification process exactly is dehumidification with the reheat coil. How exactly I'll show you. You see, most dehumidification process use the combination of cooling and then reheating. This is not in all the cases, but this also one case. For normal window or split, you will find only cooling. You will not find the reheating coil. But exactly, precisely, if you want to maintain this uh, humidity, then this is required. You see, you will find the two coils. One is a cooling coil, and one is a reheating coil. Oh, exactly, I'll show you. Don't worry. The air passes through a cooling device, nothing but a cooling coil. Then some form form of heating device, say heating coil. And this heat can be utilized from the waste heat energy from the system only. And I'm talking about the vapor compression cycle. In vapor compression cycle, in condenser you will find the heat, na. So that heat we can utilize to reheat the air. But don't think about the process at this level. Just I'm giving the idea so so that you can understand the process. Don't think about the system. Just some idea to understand the process. Or else I'll give you, for example, you see, consider this is one cooling coil. This time I'm drawing the side view. And after that you'll find one small capacity heating coil. So first air pass through the cooling coil. Process one to two is the air passing through the cooling coil. Then process two to three is a heating. So this is a heating coil, and this is a cooling coil. Just I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm just giving the idea about the system first. Then we'll discuss in detail. Don't worry. So first cooling, then heating. Cooling for what? To extract the moisture. And heating for what? To maintain the air. Because you know, as the temperature increases. Relative humidity increases. Yes. So, so how exactly the process? Relative humidity decreases. I mean, sir, that means percentage uh, will be decreased. Will vary for all this. Okay. The moisture content is different, and the RH is different. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. So, uh, don't yes, get confused. Little, little I, confused. So, let me zoom this. Now you see. First of all, what are the different conditions at different points? You see, example is what ninety degree dry bulb and seventy five degree wet bulb. This is a condition one. Initial condition, room only. I'm not adding any more outside. This is a room air initial condition. I'm interested to maintain this 75 degree Fahrenheit at 50 per person hour. This is my requirement. Okay, so this is the present condition, and this is the required condition. So now at point one, how we got this point one by this 90 and 75. 90 you can verify here, and 75 line. You see this is 75, so this we can consider 70. So this is the intersection point. So this is point one. Okay, this is point one. Now point two. Come here. Fifty. Sorry, my mistake. Point two is here. This is point two. Fifty seventy-five percent RH. Sorry, seventy-five percent seventy-five degree Fahrenheit. This is seventy-five degree Fahrenheit now. And you see forty and sixty in between. If I draw the line, 
I'll give 50. So this point I can consider this condition for point 2. In between I'm considering say A. 1 to A then A to 2. So my requirement is at point 2. But that point 2 cannot be achieved directly with the cooling. So first of all, first what we'll do, we'll overcool the air so that we can extract more and more moisture. Means decreasing the humidity. After that, we are adding the heat that is sensible heat to increase the RH. Means to increase the RH means to increase the holding capacity of moisture by the air. It not mean that we are adding the moisture. Okay, because for human comfort, you know, this example you can relate with the human comfort. For human comfort, 50% RH is comfortable condition. Na? So now you see, process at point one, what are the condition? This is dry and humid air. Because at this point, the RH we can consider is 50%. You can check. You see, this is the same point. Na? But the temperature is 90. So first, we are interested to decrease the temperature. So decreasing temperature, you see, extracting the heat from point 0.1 to 2. And this point 0.1 to 2, same as the previous case. In the previous case, we talk about cooling. Na? Same thing will happen. You see, temperature decreases. And what would happen to this uh, humidity ratio? Decreases. So you see, if you just draw the point, means vertically down, this is latent, then this is sensible. Same as the previous case. So humidity ratio decreases and the dry, driver temperature also decreases. Uh, right? Then at point A, the condition of air is what? Saturated almost. You see, first, this is point 1, this is point 2. Then let me add this point A. Point A, dry bulb temperature, you see say 55 degree Fahrenheit and what about RH? 1997 I think. Uh, we cannot say 100% say 97. So this temperature and you see actually we are looking for 75 then why we are reducing to 55 okay. to extract the moisture for, for more condensation. So that's the reason we overcool the air. We overcool the air so that the temperature of that coil should be less than equal to the dew point temperature of the air so that the condensation can be happen on the coil okay so that's the reason we overcool the air so at, at point one the air is overcool and for what for, for what to reduce to extract the moisture and you see at this point the moisture or let me write this w1 condition means humidity ratio at one w1 is 106.5 six grains per pound 100 120 so if you check you'll get 106 w2 is what this is 64.4 sorry 64.6 grains per pound nothing but this one slightly more than 60 no? 64 so to reduce this i mean uh, this moisture this humidity ratio we overcool the air okay but the comfortable condition we must, whatever the temperature we maintain for human comfort, at that temperature, RS should be in between 30 to 60. In this example, say 50. So to achieve this 50% RH, what we'll do with the second coil? You see, 1 to A is what? Cooling coil. Mm -hmm. This is for cooling coil. A to 2 is what? Heating coil. Reheating coil. So we used to call reheat coil. Because reheat, na? first cooling, then heating. So we can call reheat. So this coil is called reheat coil in actual practice. Mm -hmm. We are not calling the heating coil, we used to call reheat process or reheat coil. So by using a very little small capacity, what capacity also we'll talk about enthalpy in here. So com compared to the cooling coil, the capacity of reheat coil is very less. By using that separate heating coil and the heating coil can be a separate heater from the electrical supply, means electrical heater, resistance heater, or it can be waste heat energy from the condenser or from the building. We have this option. So adding the heat and which heat only sensible. You see, A to 2 is what? You can see from A to 2 means what? Driver temperature increases, na? Driver temperature will increase by adding the heat only. Okay, so at point 2, you will get the desirable conditions. At point 2, the condition is what? 75 degree Fahrenheit. This temperature, you see, this temperature. And we are increasing the temperature for what? For two reasons. First reason to maintain the required temperature, second to maintain the RH. Because as you increase the temperature, the holding capacity of the moisture increases. So RH decreases, na? right? Decreases. So you see at yeah. point, the RH we can consider as 50%. So this process is called 
डिम्यूटिफिकेशन विथ रीट एंड डिम्यूटिफिकेशन मीन्स विथ अ कूलिंग ओनली ओके गॉट दिस ऑनलाइन यस नाउ विल टॉक अबाउट दिस इंथॉलपी थ्री हियर वन टू ए दिस दिस इंथॉलपी दिस डेल्टा हेच फॉर वॉट फॉर कूलिंग न और आई कैन से वन टू ए दिस इज फिफ्टीन पॉइंट फाइव बी टी यू पर पाउंड मीन्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गेट द कंडीशन फ्रॉम वन टू ए दिस मच ऑफ एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ इट इज रिक्वायर्ड एंड विच हिट सेंसेबल एज वेल एज लैटर ओके अप टू दिस स्टेट पॉइंट सेंसेबल देन रिमेनिंग सेंसेबल प्लस लैटर देन पॉइंट ए टू टू To get eighty two, how much heat is required? You see, this is represent enthalpy, na? Five point two. Right, five point two. Five point two BTU. You can check this in the psychometric chart. You can find out this this part, this point, this point, and you can find out how much increase in humidity. So here is a given directly. Means extracting this fifteen point five BTU per pound, and after that adding five point two BTU per pound to get the required result. So the reason is a we can say cooling and reheat process or Actually, this is for extracting more and more moisture. So the process is the dehumidification. With the dehumidification, we'll get the cooling also. Cooling means cooling means humidity ratio decreases. So you see, only sensible cooling means we are not talking about the dehumidification. Here we are talking about sensible plus latent cooling. And latent. Ah, uh, actually, for the dehumidification process. The latent process will obviously occur because in the evaporative coil condensation is occur. Hmm. So latent process. No, in case of evaporative cooling, you'll not get the latent process. That is evaporative cooling. But here we are yeah. talking about sensible plus latent cooling. I mean the with the vapor compression cycle or with the chill water system. Okay, you'll find only sensible cooling option also. That is evaporative case, like in air cooler. That also we'll discuss. We have a process. Next, the next process is isothermal humidification. Isothermal refers to what? Constant temperature. temperature. Right, constant temperature. Humidification means. adding the moisture so first of all we'll discuss how we can add the moisture so we can add the moisture with the different ways you see in this isothermal humidification we are adding the moisture by using a steam or we are heating the water by using the heating coil like a uh, like a heater and we are making that water we are adding the heat to the water and we'll make it evaporate or else we are providing the steam we have the process of spraying the water also that you'll find in adiabatic humidifier that is the next okay in that we are not adding the heat to the moisture but in this case isothermal humidification you see we are adding the moisture sorry we are adding the steam and the steam is generated by using a steamer or by using this electrical resistance steamer etc or by using the heat with the natural gas or electrical energy or with the boiler etc different types of sources for heat so that system will discuss later at this level just i have given the idea to understand this process so the requirement is what isothermal humidification means we are maintaining the same temperature and we are adding the moisture you see isothermal humidification so we are not changing the temperature because the process will give you the idea na no? from at constant temperature we are adding the moisture so now you see uh, our requirement is 75 degree fahrenheit air from 15 degrees rh we are interested to maintain this 50% rh in this we are not disturbing the temperature just we are increasing the rh okay as per the process getting your point temperature is constant just we are increasing the humidity and increasing the humidity the process called humidification by using a steam or by introducing a steam so what are the different conditions you'll get first of all you see this is point 1 and this is point So, what are the condition at point one? At point one, dry bulb temperature is what seventy-five degree Fahrenheit, and RH fifteen percent. Okay. Actually, with this condition only, we got this point. You know how to get this point in the psychometric chart. Now, if you talk about point two conditions, you see this is a desired condition. Dry bulb temperature. Twenty-five. What same? Because isothermal, na? No? Yes. Mm. And what about the RH? Fifty percent. Fifty percent. That is desired condition. Yes. And how we can achieve this? 
simply by adding the moisture and moisture means the heated steam now what will happen to this humidity ratio we'll discuss now point now we'll talk about this humidity ratio so w1 you see this is a point now this is 20 grains per pound and what about w2 increase or will in it will increase or decrease Increase, increase. Obviously, we're adding so adding the moisture. So definitely, this humidity ratio means more grains per pound of dry air will increase. Okay, so this is when you check above sixty, I'm getting sixty four point six pound. Sorry, grains per pound of dry air. Okay, this can be happen by. You see, we are not increasing the temperature. Then how this humidification process? Or how we can achieve this RH? Definitely by adding the heat. Na? Hmm. So now we'll check the enthalpy. H1. You see, this is 0.1. So this H1, you see, 20, 25. So here I got 22. 22 BTU per pound. Then H2. You see, this is a point. 28. When you check, huh? I'm getting 29 BTU per pound. And therefore, delta H is what? 7. It means by adding this 7 BTU for this pound, one can increase the RH without increasing the temperature. Now Normally, the question is, okay. now the question is adding the heat, but temperature is not increasing. Mm -hmm. Then where the then where the heat goes? Yes, exactly. My question is that. That heat is utilized to Change the phase of that water. Change the phase. Of... We are providing the moisture, this steam, na. Uh huh. But to convert that water to steam, heat is required. So we are adding this seven BTU of heat to the moisture so that it can evaporate and mix in the room, so that the RH increases. Okay. At same temperature, you see the RH is increasing because of same temperature. If the temperature decrease or increase, the case will be different. The holding capacity will, 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 will be different. No? With the same temperature, if you add the moisture, or it also will increase, right? Okay, so this is isothermal humidification process. Just focus on the process. Don't think for overall condition because we are not talking about the system at this level. Just we are talking about only process. And just you need to understand if you maintain the same temperature and adding the humidity, what will happen to the other parameter? So that at the time of designing, this information will help controlling which parameter to change what parameter as per the requirement. Okay. Because, for example, for a particular process control, we are not interested to increase or decrease the temperature, but we are maintaining, we are interested to maintain the moisture level. So this can be done with this process. After class, just you need to go through all this because this is very, very important. Uh, next process is uh, adiabatic humidification process. So adiabatic refers to what? Energy. Enthalpy. Means, yeah, constant, enthalpy. constant enthalpy. Means no exchange of heat. Means we are not adding or removing the heat. But we are increasing the moisture. That is nothing but adiabatic humidification process. So this can be done. You see, this is point 0.1, this is point 0.2. Point 0.1 condition, you see, 80 degree Fahrenheit and 13% RH. You can see 18% and 13% RH, this is a point. I'm interested to increase this humidity level to 50% without adding the heat. In the previous case, we add the heat, na? but in this case, we are interested to increase the uh, RH, but without adding the heat. So how it can be done? I'll show you. So you see, point one condition. Hmm. Anyhow, point one condition you can relate here. Hmm. Then point two condition. T one. You see. T one is what? I can consider. Sorry. T two na point two means uh, T two means what? Sixty five. Yes, 65 degree Fahrenheit. Hmm. Next, 
what about this uh, in this case in this case you see enthalpy i can consider h1 equal to h2 because the line is going parallel to this uh, inclined line no? means mm -hmm. it's not increasing the enthalpy because these are the enthalpy points so it's not increasing it's same so h1 equal to h2 which is what 22.3 meter per hour meter per hour now we'll check this uh, humidity ratio w1 w2 w1 you see 20 grains per pound what about w2 45.5 5 grains per pound delta w i can consider 25.5 grains per pound okay now the question is without adding the heat how you are increasing the moisture right in the previous case we add the heat to the water and that water is changing to steam and the steam we are adding in the space means adding the heat at constant temperature we increase the rh but in this case we are not adding the heat but increasing the moisture how this is a simple process what we are doing we are allowing the air to pass through a wet medium like a honeycomb or any wet filter. medium no, like, a, like a wet filter or a honeycomb or Alternately, one can use very narrow uh, jets of water and spraying the water with a very with a means like uh, like we are using the spray water uh, spray bottle. So just spraying the water inside the room with a very uh, what you can say, very small particles. So what will happen? The room air heat. The room air will extract that moisture. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the previous case, we add the steam. That is a hot moisture. But here, there is no hot moisture. The same temperature moisture. Just we are spraying. It means we are not adding the heat. And because of this, you see the temperature. Temperature is decreasing. No? The room temperature is decreasing. Because that room, room air heat is extracted by the moisture what we are supplying. Like evaporative cooling. Okay, like evaporation. Okay, so in some application, you'll find, or we can say air washers, or similar to air cooler. Not exactly. Hmm. Air cooler, we can call a evaporative cooling, but in this, we are not talking about cooling, just we are talking about this increasing the RH. Got the idea online? Yes. And the same theory, what I explained is given here. You see with the splash splash specialized nozzles or dispensers we are supplying the water inside the space okay so this is adiabatic humidification in some applications you'll find this one uh, next we have evaporative cooling and the mixing air okay this we'll discuss in the next session so what you do is just go through this uh, we have only two process and after that we have very important equations not lengthy but important so in next session, I'll complete this.